Hi everybody, happy Saturday. I hope you're having a most magical Saturday. Uh, here it is very strange because we have beautiful blue skies, bright sun, and 10 minutes later this massive dark cloud cover comes over and that stays for a half hour then the sun comes back and the clouds the dark dark storm clouds come over again so I don't know the wind is whipping it's a lot colder than it has been and uh, they say storms are coming in this afternoon so that's kind of fun I don't mind um, Let's see, first off we have my original Topo Jijo joining me. This is my original Topo Jijo. My grandmother got him for me when I was about four years old. We went to Passaic on the bus and she bought him for me. He's dressed in soccer gear, which is so fun. And um, he's all intact, he's all perfect, except for his felt tie has, um, I guess, worn away over the years. The little pin with the where it was. Uh, he would have had a little tiny black felt tie right here. He's so magical. Topo Jijo. Love him. He's my original Topo Jijo. And when, when me and my grandmother got him, my brother was a little baby. And so we got my brother like a squishy um, baby version of Topo Jijo. Mine is all hard plastic. Or rubber, whatever he is, and my brother's had like a cloth body with the Topo Gigio head. So sweet. I love him. <laughs> Look how cute he is. And uh, we are drinking a Mermaid Pilsner, Coney Island Brewery, one of my favorite breweries in the world, very local to us. And uh, I love Coney Island because. They have the Coney Island Sideshow, they have the Freak Bar, and they have the Sideshow Museum. And uh, the Coney Island uh, brewer, brewers uh, have always been my favorite. In fact, I have the original Coney Island Lager guy tattooed right here. I don't know if you can see him, but because uh, the kitchen lighting is very weird with the light coming in the window. But anyway, he's right here, and he's beautiful. And the original artist uh, who drew that was a tattoo, a Brooklyn tattoo artist. And my, of course, my own personal friend, tattoo artist, did that for me. But the, when the guy from the Coney Island, uh, the guy, the actual artist who drew that saw it, he said, oh, I wish I tattooed it. I said, I know, but I didn't know you then, and uh, I'm very loyal to my own guy, of course. All right, finally, I, I uh, framed my King Crimson poster from that awesome set that I bought from uh, Joe at Music Connection, remember? Really, really fun. Finally, finally measured it. That was the problem. Every time I was out, I was like, oh man, what size was that? I never measured it. So I finally did and got the poster. I mean, got the frame. All right. Last Sunday, my dad gave me this. This is Dixieland Jazz for New Orleans Jazz Studies. This is a series of prints. Now, um, this is from 1978. I don't, he doesn't remember buying it. I don't remember buying it. One of us bought it because both of us actually visited New Orleans in 78. Um, I meant, I went many more times, but um, the first time I went was 78. And uh, I may well have bought this. He may well have bought this when he went, but uh, neither one of us <laughs> remembers buying it. So, But it's really cool, and he found it and gave it to me last Sunday. Dixieland Jazz for New Orleans Jazz Studies. This is a beautiful series of prints. I bet you my dad bought these because he was very fond of buying art prints whenever he went away, especially to arty towns or, you know, like Provincetown. He bought a lot of art in Provincetown. New Orleans Dixieland Jazz Solo. Uh, these are by Kay Burke. 
Isn't that beautiful? Oh my God, they're so amazing. This one is keeping time nicely. So magical. And this one's called Easy Feeling. And the last one is called Sweet Reflections. They are so beautiful. I'm so glad he found them. They're in a little folder. It has a, a history over here of the birthplace of jazz, of course, and about the artist. Really, really fun. Very fun piece for him to find. I'm glad he did. All right. Uh, I got my Knox winnings. Uh, I bid on a lot of stuff. I bid on it last minute because Kurt kept on um, emailing me saying, you didn't bid yet, you didn't bid yet. I remember I said time was slipping away and I finally, finally got in there and just placed a ton of bids and I won these things. Uh, this is really, really cool. This is a two record 12 inch set audio disc recording blanks. Uh, it says tunes that mention Bing. Two of them. Tunes that mention Bing Crosby. Isn't that interesting? This is going to be so fun. And the other thing I got from Kurt was a uh, uh, transcription record. A uh, beautiful big 18 inch transcription. This is Space Age Sounds. Doesn't that sound amazing? Very excited about that. The box that these came in was massive because of the transcription record and um, did I say 18 inch probably 16 inch whatever transcription record size uh, so the box was so huge for just two little things two little winnings but you know Kurt packs like Fort Knox and I'm always so thankful for that all right today I stopped in the thrift I stopped in the thrift uh, last night and then I stopped again this morning to see if they added anything new um, because last night, nothing, nothing at all. But today I found this and it's so bizarre. This is Johnny Whittaker. The album is called Friends. Now, Johnny Whittaker is, of course, Jody from Family Affair. And, um, this was a show that was on, uh, it was called Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. And, um, really cute because you can see the sea monster here in the back. I don't know if he, if he shows up very well, but really cute. And I don't remember the show, but uh, when was it from, I wonder? 1973. I don't remember the show, but the reason I bought the LP is because there's like great songs on here, like The Magician, Monster, Rock, you know, uh, Sigmund and the Sea Monster, keep it keep it a secret it looks so fun like a little fantasy uh saturday morning show or whatever but i don't remember it uh, really really fun sigmund and the sea monster jody from family affair <laughs> so fun all right i got some ebay stuff and you know the thing is uh I got all my eBay stuff. I ordered them all on the same day, uh, which was last Friday, a week ago yesterday. I got them all except for the one I want the most, which is the acid test. And right now eBay says that it arrived, let's see, it arrived uh, at the Origin Facility, Denver, Colorado yesterday. So one week from when I bought it, they actually um, shipped it or whatever. Uh, it took a lot. It took a week for them to ship it. So anyway, unless they had like a massive, unless they were one of those vendors that bought every record store day thing for for eBay, and they got so many orders that they just shipped them. It took them a while to pack and ship. But the other ones I ordered the same day and I got them the Monday after. So, of course, I'm dying to hear that acid test. So, I don't know. Whatever. 
All right, I got Cat Stevens, Matthew and Son, two records set. Now, I, I watched a documentary about Cat Stevens or Yusuf Islam, and the documentary is so great. And it, uh, in it, they played um, the first cut is the deepest. I didn't know that Cat Stevens wrote that song. I, I honestly did not know. And first cut is the deepest is on here. So this is a very early Cat Stevens, two record set, beautiful stuff. I love Cat Stevens. And you know, I was really angry when he became like, a, when he went into Islam, I didn't understand. But then I didn't, why? You know, I didn't understand why. And then um, I watched the documentary, a couple of documentaries on him and, and he's such a sweet and gentle person and he does a lot of stuff for charity and he does a ton of stuff for children and uh, it was just wonderful. I thought it was really, really good. So anyway, revisiting Cat Stevens. Um, Brian, uh, the Brian Jonestown Massacre, one of my favorite bands uh, at the moment. And this one is a 12-inch single. It's beautiful. Open Minds, now close. Look at that great cover. I love this band. I listen to these guys when I do dreadlocks because they're so awesome and relaxing. Considered the greatest psych band in the last 20 years. So, uh, Also, Brian Jones, Town Massacre, Who Killed Sgt. Pepper. Two record set. Beautiful stuff. Just loving them. So, the thrifts have not been very good to me. The Johnny Whittaker album is kind of funny. That's going to be really good. In fact, this afternoon I'm going to um, uh, play the play that and listen to that. See what that sounds sounds like. Um, waiting for storms. I like storms. Not bad. I don't mind them as long as they're not dangerous storms. Um, we've had a lot of rain. We had tons of rain yesterday. There was a lot of flooding around, but I know a lot of parts of the country are really suffering from rain, from serious flooding. And I hope that all of you are okay where you are, because I know I know people in Arkansas, I know people in Missouri, uh, and these are places that are hard hit, and I, I just hope that you're all okay. So anyway, I think that's about it. I wanted to come in and chat a little bit because I haven't seen, you know, I don't get in here all that much and, uh, you know, once a week if that, and I, I would like to do it more. Um, but uh, it's so crazy busy at work right now that I get a little stressed out during the week and I don't have the energy to do stuff. And uh, we're right in the middle of a where, of a move, and it's it's insane. It's absolutely insane. We just had inventory this week, so I had to wait for the inventory to be completed before I could enter my numbers. And uh, I was under pressure Friday late afternoon to get five days of numbers in after they finally finished the inventory. I, I was ready to shoot myself. I felt like my heart was going to pound out of my chest. So that's why I went to the thrift last night. Kind of wander around and see if I could find something fun. Found nothing. So, I mean, <laughs> I think it deserved a fun thing uh, after a day like that, but whatever. What are you going to do? The thrift is so hit or miss and I haven't been finding all that much. Once in a while, but we got to go a lot, otherwise you miss stuff. They had this really cool, really kitschy uh, Florida uh, TV lamp with the shells and the lights inside the shells. It was absolutely awesome. But um, and I was going to buy it, but uh, someone had changed the wires and I could see that the, it was rewired and I didn't like the looks of, you know, you know how wiring has to be very, very safe and uh, Skeety was, uh, you know, always did beautiful electrical wiring. He knew how to do it. And when I looked at that, I said, this looks scary. So I, I passed on that 
It was beautiful though, and the light would have come from inside the shells. It was it was really pretty because I know they make little ones, but this was a nice big one, you know. For you know the TV, the mid-century TV lamps used to have with the light coming up from the back or inside. It was really cool. Um, I looked through all the records, found nothing new. And they had a lot of records uh, piling up, but. Nothing uh, of interest. Tons of classical music, which, you know, some of it is cool. And, you know, I, I do go through it because you never know. Um, but the only thing I found was that Johnny Whittaker, and I thought that was great because I've never seen that before. And like I said, I don't, I'm not familiar with the show. So that'll be fun. And uh, Monster Rock is probably going to be a great one, a great song. So anyway, I hope you're having a magical, mystical musical Saturday. I love you all. I hope to talk to you very, very soon.